I will show you how to use number flow in Unity. This is a quad. This is a light. It's shining on this quad and that's why it's so bright. But the quad is very boring, it is only a simple diffuse material and it doesn't even have a texture. I want a texture! Okay, I can create one with number flow. Create number flow diagram. Now open the number flow window. Start adding notes! There you go, I want an output note. Here's a color. And I'll name it main text because that's what the shader expects. I want a gradient. I want a gradient that really does any gradienting. I can connect these two together. And now my texture is black. Or it's white. Or it's black. Or it depends on the texture's U coordinate. Or it depends on the texture's V coordinate. Or there is some purling noise involved. That's very nice. I created some tiling purling noise with a bunch of settings. Like this, it needs a vector for its sample point. So I create one based on my u and v coordinates. And then I will use this for my gradient. And there we have it, a nice noisy texture. And as you can see, it tiles. But there's a lot of black in it. Why is there a lot of black in it? Because the noise is negative about half the, of the time. And the gradient only expects values between 0 and 1. So let's use this node to get rid of all the negative values. Nice. Okay. And I want to add some color to my gradient. Am I feeling blue? No, I'm not feeling blue. Everyone should be green. Look at the nice, nice sky. And to finish it off, it's some bright yellow. Here's my texture. Great. Now, how do I get it onto this quad? You do that with a diagram material manager. Hey, what? A diagram material manager. You have to create it yourself. So let's start with an empty game object. Name it manager. Turn it into a prefab. That's a very important step. Add a component. Scripts, number flow, diagram material manager. This thing links diagrams and materials together. I want one such link. I'll give it some nice texture settings. Hit mapping, nice filtering, nice aniso level, excellent. And now I will drag in my diagram and add my material and boom! Wow! Here's your texture! A dynamic texture, procedurally generated, available to you in edit mode. And it also works in play mode, of course, otherwise there isn't much of a point. No, now we don't. Okay, let's make this a little bit more interesting. This is a drab diffuse texture. What about a specular one? Whoa! Okay, it's shiny. You can vary the shininess using the alpha channel of your texture. Oh, let's try that. Here's my gradient. Let's run this one back to zero. That should do it. Now my preview is interpreting alpha as transparency, what's you what is usual. But it's not very effective in this case. I can switch my preview to just use the RGB channels, then I can once again see my diffuse colors. Or I can use alpha preview mode so I can look at my specularity. Great. All looks well. Texture is still the same. Why is that? 
Well, because you have to give your manager instance a kick before it will update itself. You can do that by just hitting revert and now we have a shiny texture that is a little bit more interesting. Next step, normal maps. Bump specular requires a normal map. So let's add a normal map. We can do that by adding another output. Normal maps are basically height fields. So I'll use an output with a single value and connect it to my ping pong node. It's supposed to be named bump map. Its type is a normal map. I'll set its preview to RGB and change my preview to my bump map. And here you go, here is your normal map. And it's completely flat because you have to give it a strength. Now it's not flat at all. So let's use a value like this. Nice and bumpy. Go back to the scene. Great. Give my manager a kick. And here's your bumpy texture. Great. Don't like the resolution? Maybe you can change it. So I'm changing the prefab instance now. So I have to hit apply instead of reverse. And here's your high res image. And that's how you use number flow.